Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel where we talk about data visualizations in Python. Today we're talking about the Seaborn Pear Grid. So for starters, what is the Pear Grid? Well, it's a subplot template that you can use to show off pairwise relationships. The Pear Grid serves as the backbone for Seaborn's pair plot, but it's more flexible than the pair plot. The pair grid is more similar to the facet grid, except for now we'll have a matrix of subplots where we have marginal distribution plots along the diagonal and relationship plots for two variables on the off diagonals. You can even put two different relationship plots on the lower and upper triangles. So let's see how to set up your pair grid using the Seaborn code. By the way, you can check out all of the code I'm about to show you on my GitHub page. To get started, I'll go ahead and import Seaborn as SNS, and I'm also importing PyPlot as PLT. For this video, I'm going to be working with some data about irises, so I'm loading in data from the Seaborn library and calling this variable iris. Here we can see the head of that iris data frame, and so each row is about one particular flower, and we have various different measurements. I'll go ahead and set my styling to be dark grid and I'm ready to create my pair grid. To do this, we're going to reference the Seaborn library and the pair grid, and then you'll just need to pass in the data frame that you want to make a pair grid for. So for us, that's gonna be the iris data frame. All right, great. So here's what we have. We have various different small multiple plots, and if we look through these, you'll see that we actually have a four by four grid. And along this bottom row, we see that we have various different plots one for each of the numerical columns from that iris data frame. And the same goes with the rows. We have one row for every single numerical column that was in our iris data frame. So right now we have a blank pair grid and this would actually give us a variable as well. So let's actually save that variable as G. If we go ahead and check the type of G, we will find that G is a Seaborn pair grid. So we need to add some data to this pair grid, and we're going to do that by using methods of this pair grid object, G. So let's say that I've created a pair grid from an iris data frame, and I've saved that in the variable G. To actually add data to G, what I can use is this method called map. Map will take in whatever type of plot you're trying to make. So let's say that we actually want to make a scatter plot. We'll reference the Seaborn library and call it the scatter plot. This will map the scatter plot into all of those different small multiples, all 16 of them. So this is super helpful because we can see how each of these different numerical quantities are related to each other. For example, if there's a positive or negative correlation between petal width and sepal length. And we can do that for every single combination of numerical values in our data frame. One interesting thing that happens here is that along the diagonals, we're just seeing straight lines. So what's happening is we're actually plotting petal width against petal width. So we would just see a straight line on all of those diagonal components. And so, so far, this is looking pretty similar to what we see on Seaborn's pair plot. But the pair grid is actually much more flexible than the pair plot. So what I could do now, instead of putting scatter plots on every single small multiple, I could actually map whatever function I'd like. So let's say I want to do the hist plot instead. Now we're able to see a histogram on all of those different small multiples within this pair grid. So you have lots of options about different functions that you can map onto this pair grid. And you can even go beyond Seaborn and actually map matplotlib functions onto this pair grid as well. So to do that, you would just reference the pyplot module, and let's say that we're going to do the scatter plot here as well. Here we have a pyplot scatter plot, which looks a little bit different than what we have for the Seaborn scatter plot. So the main thing here is that right now we just need to have some sort of bivariate plot. So it needs to be able to handle getting data for both the X and Y coordinates. Once you've got your Seaborn pair grid set up, you'll be able to map various Seaborn plots to different regions. Your options include the main diagonal, the off diagonals, the lower triangular part, or the upper triangle. So let's see that in the Seaborn code. 
So we previously saw that we can use map to map data onto the pair grid, but we had a requirement before that we had to use plots that could accept both X and Y data. And we had just one plot over the entire pair grid, but the pair grid is actually much more flexible than that. So there's actually a couple more methods that we can use for this G pair grid object. Let's try map off diag. This will be a plot that we want to plot on only the off diagonals. So let's say we want to put a scatter plot on those off diagonals. This will plot a relationship scatter plot on all of the off diagonals, but it keeps that main diagonal free. So what we can do now is actually plot a different style of plot along the main diagonal. So that would be g.mapdiag. Now we'll pass in the Seaborn hist plot. Now, because we've passed the hist plot to the main diagonal, Seaborn interprets this that we want a distribution plot for only the one variable along the diagonal. So for this example, we're actually plotting a histogram for only the petal width, and that's going to be a univariate plot instead of the bivariate style plot that we saw before. And now this style is looking very, very similar to what we get with the Seaborn pair plot. But we can do even more. If we want to plot a different style of plot to the lower or upper triangles, we also have that option. So let's go ahead and use map lower, and we'll put a Seaborn scatter plot in our lower triangle. This maps that scatter plot to only the bottom triangle of this pair grid. We can also map a different plot if we'd like to the upper portion of this plot. So let's actually put a KDE plot up there. So any of these plots that you're mapping to the upper or lower triangles do need to be bivariate plots because they're going to get interpreted by both the X and Y variables. But along the main diagonal, we'll actually have univariate plots. So you can do things like map diag and actually maybe put even a box plot here. So really anything that would only need one variable can go along the main diagonal. So now we're seeing just a box plot for that one variable along the main diagonal. As you can imagine, this is very, very flexible and gives you a lot of different options that where you can go beyond the basic Seaborn pair plot. The final option I wanted to show you basically removes that upper triangle portion completely. Right now we have the Seaborn scatter plot on the off diagonals, but if you take a look at these plots a little bit closer, we basically have some redundancy. So in this figure we have the sepal length and the sepal width, but in this figure we have the sepal width and the sepal length. So really these two plots are mirror images of each other. That gives us redundant information. So what we can do is actually completely turn off this upper triangular portion. To do that, we would say corner and set that equal to true. This alerts Seaborn that we actually do not want to even plot those corner figures. And this can potentially make your plot a little bit cleaner if you would like to remove that redundant information. And you have a few additional options. Let's see how you can use hue to show off categories or filter down to a subset of your variables. So if you've worked with Seaborn before, you know that a lot of these plots have an argument called hue where you can show off a categorical variable through the color of your plot. And the pair grid is no exception. So right now we have a pair grid for iris data where we have KDEs along the diagonal and scatter plots along the off diagonal. If we want to use hue to show off a category of our data, we can do that through the pair grid. So we'll just add in this extra argument called hue, and we'll set that to be whatever the column name of that categorical column is. So in this case, we have a column called species that tells us the species of the flower. Now we'll see that each of those different species has been broken out into a different color. One thing that we can notice about the diagonal is that we have some very large peaks and then some very small peaks. So right now, all of those different diagonal plots are all coming from the same scale, but that's not always what you want to do. So here, if you'd like to scale each of those different diagonal components by themselves, you can use this argument called diag share y and we'll set that equal to false. This gives each of those different diagonal components their own scaling for their y-axis. And I find this to be a lot nicer, especially when we're dealing with something like KDE plots. 
Now, by default, the pair grid is going to give you one row and one column for every single numerical feature in your data set. If you'd like to scale down to just some of those numerical variables, you can use this argument called vars. So here we wanna pass in a list, and this will just be whichever of those numerical features that you actually would like to plot. So for me, I'm going to do the pedal length and also the pedal width, but I'm gonna leave out the sepal length and sepal width. This signals to Seaborn that we only want to see these numerical columns in our pair grid. This can be really helpful if you have a lot of different numerical columns. And you can even go beyond that. Let's say that you only wanted certain variables to show up along the x-axis and certain variables to show up along your y. Well, you can specify each of those individually. So this can allow you to pair up the exact features that you would like to. So in this case, we only have pedal length along the Y, and then we have each of the other three along the X. Like usual, there's tons of styling that you can do for the Seaborn pair grid. Let's check out your options in the Python code. Like for most Seaborn plots, the pair grid has a lot of different styling components that you can utilize. So one thing I wanted to show you right off the bat is that you can pass in plot specific keywords to these different plots on the diagonals and off diagonals. So for example, here we have a pair grid plot with KDEs along the diagonal and scatter plots on the off diagonals. With the KDE plot, we know that we can fill in underneath that line and we can also adjust the line width by setting LW equal to a larger number. So these keyword arguments pass through to the Seaborn KDE plot, and we're able to make those adjustments here as well. But now these keyword arguments are specific to the plot that we're dealing with. So for example, with the scatter plot, we have access to other arguments such as S for the size, or alpha to adjust the transparency, and we can even add a little black ring around the edge of these dots. So lots and lots of different styling you can do. Just make sure that your keyword arguments here match the same keyword arguments you would use in the specific plot you're dealing with. Beyond those plot specific styling options, you also have several styling options within the pair grid itself. So by default, the pair grid will give us a fairly large figure and each of those different small multiples will be square in nature. So if you'd like to change either the height of this entire figure or the aspect ratio, you can do that through arguments within the pair grid. So first of all, let's say that we want to make a smaller figure and we'll reduce our height down to 1.5. This affects the size overall of the entire figure, but we can also change the aspect ratio for each of those individual plots. So let's change aspect to two this will make our plots twice as wide as they are tall. And as you can see, this could help you design a pair grid that is really however tall and however wide you want it to be. If you'd like to change the colors of your pair grid, you can update those by passing through a specific palette. So the palette argument could go right here in the pair grid, and let's update that to Viridis. This gives us nice green, blues, and purples all throughout our figure. And one thing to note here is that all of these colors are matching up with each other, even if you are using different plots along the diagonal or off diagonal. So, so far we've been using the flower species to color the different dots and lines on our figure. But one thing we don't currently have is a legend. We don't exactly know which color goes with which species of flower. If you'd like to add a legend to your pear grid, one way to do this is to reference G, which is your pear grid object, and then use this method called add legend. That will go ahead and create the same pear grid we had before, but it will also add a little legend over to the right hand side. Now we see that, that purple are Satosa flowers and then the light green are Virginica. And the names for this legend are just being pulled through from our iris data frame. So this pair grid object actually has several different methods and properties available to you. And if you'd like to check those out, you can do G dot and then hit the tab button if you're working within Jupyter Notebook. So here's the add legend that we just did, but we have options to do lots and lots of other things here. And for example, let's try palette. Palette is a property, and this will give you just the color palette that we're currently using for our figure. But go ahead and check out lots of different options within the Seaborn Pear Grid. So I hope you enjoyed learning all about the Seaborn Pear Grid. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. 
And if you want to learn more about the Seaborn pair plot or the facet grid, go ahead and check out my past videos about those. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. Well, it's a sim subplot template. Subplot template. Subplot template. <laughs> subplot template. That's one more thing. Mm. By the way, you can check out all of the show shows that I just code you. <laughs>